call this meeting to order. The vision of the village of Valmont is striving for a vibrant and balanced community. And our mission is to serve the community and embrace opportunity. So um, the first item is the adoption of the agenda. And I note that we've got uh, a, a late item uh, for, uh, for an event using some of our facilities on August 25th. And I would ask council if we could add that to the agenda as item 6.5. Mm -hmm. Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Salt, all in favor? Great, got that piece added. Uh, next item of business. Um, is the uh, minutes of the regular council meeting July 23, pages 7 to 12. Motion from Councillor Salt, Councillor Blanchett. All in favor? Great. No delegations tonight, but we'll move on to unfinished business, an item that we saw last meeting. Um, Cutback Holdings is seeking a rezoning, uh, or a zoning amendment. It's in the RD. Uh, Councillor Blanchett, would you like to speak to this? So, um, the cutbacks have uh, a parcel of land on 17th, and they want to divide it into two parcels, one being eventually a residential, the second one being um, uh, up to six cabins. What would that be zoned as? Um, I, it's a, actually, it it's like an R1, but yeah. anyways. So, uh, and they, they want to put up to six cabins up there. So regional district asked us um, for an opinion and, and how we feel about the uh, venture. Um, so what we've done is we've written a letter and we've just um, pointed out a few items that the traffic on 17th Avenue, uh, the access road to this property is currently an unpaved road. Uh, the concern related to this issue is the impact of additional traffic on the existing infrastructure of this road and what this traffic would require in terms of infrastructure and signage. Uh, snowmobiles and ATVs um, are not permitted in the village, so if that becomes an issue, there'll be village enforcement. Uh, Cranberry Marsh is a significant feature to the village for both economic development and for ecological purposes. So we're, we're um, concerned about the increased impact of water and sewer on the marsh and the setback distance of the cabins from the marsh. Um, the campground, the potential impact of campsites built in conjunction with the camp cabins as allowed for in the zoning. There's some fire uh, suppression. In the event of a fire, the village water would be used for the fire, so the cost and volume of that would be significant on our village. And the economic development, the village sees this uh, proposed project as having a positive economic development effect on the village of Valmont. So we are sending a letter of support for the proposed zoning amendment and parcel subdivision um, for the tourist accommodation, including the up to six cabins. Yeah, awesome. And I really want to commend staff for, uh, thank you, Council Blanchett. I really appreciate that, getting into the meat of it. And I really appreciate, we see something that I, like I think I said at the last council meeting, it's awesome to see local development happen and ownership take place and getting into this tourism thing on a small scale, it makes our community stronger. And it's neat to see staff give a really good consideration and say, yeah, like these are some of the challenges that could come up, but... Let's support this. And I, and so I think it's great. Not just to say, well, we like it, so let's let's go ahead. But just be cognizant of what's going on. Well, and the issues aren't insurmountable, so there's stuff Not that we all. can all deal with. So Yeah. It's so it's, I see Sylvia cut it back in the audience, so thank you for taking the initiative to do this. I think it's going to be wonderful. Are we waiting for the regional district? So yeah. it's still up to them. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. So, um, so I'll make a motion that we put this forward and send the letter to Regional District in favor. Okay, and Council Latimer? All in favor. Excellent. Great. That's good. Um, yeah, next item. Uh, 5.2, Sensible Change Society, the Sensible Policing Act. Um, so at the last meeting we sought RCMP uh, consideration. And I'm just going to go to page 20 of my agenda. And I'm looking for 
Uh, so there's one from Anne's. Uh, Council uh, Administrator, Anne Yansu. Um, just giving a note back for the RCMP uh, that the RCMP ultimately are, are sworn to uphold the le existing legislation as it stands, right? Um, the RCMP note that cannabis use is governed by the federal le legislation, not the province. So they're aware. Um, they are not. Uh, but my understanding of that takeaway was that they're not like, yeah, go and do this. Um, ultimately, uh, yeah, I think we recognize that. It's, and I also think it's really good to include the RCMP as in, in our information gathering. I think they can't be for or against. They have to abide by what the law is. Yeah. So um, with that, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Yeah, I, I feel strongly about this one. That something needs to change with regards to uh, the state of... Uh, um, marijuana in British Columbia. So I, I would like to move that we pass a resolution in support of the Sensible Policing Act. Second. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Bullock? Mm -hmm. Okay, discussion? There's a, 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 a presentation pretty soon here in our village. That's right, on the 13th, 15th? Okay. 13th or 15th? By, no, today is by the... By the um, by the proponent? By the, yeah. It's uh, at the Caribou Grill, but I don't remember what time it is. But okay. uh, And there's and also... At 3 o'clock? At 3 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. It would be interesting to go to that, just to uh, to mm -hmm. listen to the Absolutely. presentation for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I would love it if somebody from council could go. Um, on. I'm in regional district in Prince George. What date was that? Thursday? Thursday? This? Yeah. This Thursday. Okay. okay. So... Can you go? Okay, I oh, that would be great. Yeah, and I mean, that's really good continuity because you, uh, yeah. so some of you had to manage to get an in-depth, see a panel debate oh, in, right. uh, at UBCM. So mm -hmm. that's great. I think that kind of helped orient us uh, and prepare us for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got the motion on the table. Um, all in favor? Okay. Just to confirm for the minutes, Mr. Mayor, it's the four-part resolution on page 20. That yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 6.1, uh, Velmont Youth Soccer Club. Um, request for rental fees to be waived. I'll make a motion that we waive those fees. Excellent. Second. Okay. And all in favor? Not a contentious one. That's great. Great work they do. Just have one question. Is there anything in the community use agreement that prevents us from doing it? I'm fully in support of it, but I just know that there's been negotiations with that agreement. No, no not at this time. Okay, perfect. Yay. Excellent. That's good. Um, soccer is just an excuse to make kids run, by the way. It's a great just excuse. Throw a ball out there and I'll run after it. Sorry. Yeah. My other question, he's talking about the months of May and June. Is that... But I think it's because he's stepping now, so he wants to make sure it's covered for the following for year. For the following year? That's, okay. Yeah. Because he does mention that he's stepping down. Sorry, to clarify it, it's for the past May and June. Pardon? It's for the past May and June. It's really? for the soccer that already happened. Is he getting a letter now? Yes, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, it was. He wrote. Oh. He sent the same letter into council last year. Yeah. And council waived. Last year, and then I'm not sure the reason behind this, why this was so late. Can you connect with him and ask him about getting next year? Yeah, I can. Thank you. Thank you. That is, that's a better way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we're happy to, it looks like we're happy to, to do it, to but do it would it, be nice to, yeah. Okay. Be tell, him, uh, tell him uh, we'd already voted on it by the time we found out it was for last year. So. You said no. Uh, <laughs> no, it's all good. I, I apologize. Okay, that's great. Anyways, really good work that they're doing. And we try to keep the administrative burden to a minimum to these groups that we deal with, right? They, they do so much already, but it'd be nice to get that early. Uh, moving on to the next uh, item on the agenda, 6.2, uh, Kinnickinickers. Um, the, the, the ask is that council consider waiving a $50 fee associ associated with sound equipment rental uh, for the Family Center Midsummer Music Night on August 15th. That's coming up in a couple days. Um, of note, though, but this is what staff has said, is that the damage deposit is still required. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's that is. It has to be that ownership of the equipment. So... I'll make a motion. Uh, Councillor Bullock, Councillor Salt. Okay. 
No discussion. All in favor? Mm -hmm. All right. Are you keeping up? Uh, you betcha. Okay. Um, rail safety. Uh, I'm going to really put this one out to the counselors because I think there's a lot going on at UBCM. There's an opportunity to provide input on rail sa safety to uh, Marie Crawford at the Union of BC Municipalities so that our input can be relayed to FCM and then further up the chain. And I just look for anybody who's interested. In we need to be on board with this. We have trains running through our town daily. Absolutely. It's a huge and piece. And the littlest thing can happen. David um, has been a supervisor for CN and it's really bad when you get a train mm -hmm. derailment. And so I think anything we can do to help keep our town safe, we need to do. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So um, can you make that commitment um, to go to that particular input? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the rest of council wouldn't necessarily follow, but I do know that we have lots of time constraints and other things mm -hmm. to get to. So I'm not trying to put it at the back of the bus, but recognizing we're gonna be meeting with ministers and everything. So, uh, and we'll, that we don't need to vote on, on, on that piece. Let's just, let's just move that. We go and provide input. Okay? So I have a motion to that effect. So just to, sorry, I need to jump in. My apologies, Mr. Mayor. Yes. They're actually looking for comments via email. Yeah. Oh. So they're, they're looking for the village's thoughts in a letter okay. that would be sent via email. Okay. They don't provide a deadline. Okay. On when that letter would need to go or that email would need but to go. But priority UBC would make sense. Yeah. Uh, I imagine so. What's the best way to gather the information that we, I mean, I, I imagine that you know a lot per, from your personal life, but yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah, I think the thing is to put in some calls to CN, to the supervisors, and find a, get some, you know, um, sorry, I can't think today, um, get some information from them, and then we're getting real whole hard facts. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Council Blackshot. Okay, so do we need, do we really need a resolution to follow up on that? It's just basically notice of an opportunity. Like there's nothing legislative, legislative in there. No. I just hesitate to use a hammer when we don't when we don't need to. Sure. Well, I guess the only resolution if you want to direct staff to do the follow up as opposed to. Okay. Or, in uh, conjunction. Yeah. yeah. No, let's do that. Do you want to reach Kevin Sandy at the CN house here? Okay, and not to exclude council's participation in that nope. by any means. Nope. Okay. Would you like that to come back to the next council meeting? For yeah. Then we need a resolution for that. Yeah. Because we're making UB work. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Blanchett, <laughs> Councilor Salt, uh, any objections? All in favor? Great. Okay. Good. Thank you for helping me with that. Any help? Just let me know. Great. Okay. Moving on to, we've got the minutes of the Welfare Emergency Planning Committee and Welfare implement, Implementation uh, Framework. And that has some uh, consequences for the village. Um, and the idea is that we review did you want to set this up at all the uh, councillor salt or uh unfortunately i had missed the last meeting due to no, no trouble, no trouble. Illness, okay. so. let me let me take this one uh just read out the staff recommendation uh that council receive the minutes of the 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 planning committee Adopt the wildfire implementation framework as a living document and review review it annually, which uh, obviously, given our fire, giving our lightning storms and everything, we need to be on this. So, um, I'll make that motion. Second. Yeah. Councilor Latimer. It's a pretty in-depth report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's I mean, it looks like they've covered every possible thing yep. that could happen. Mm -hmm. So, come and the idea is it's a great report. Let's not keep it on the shelf. I guess. Right, that's yeah. always the challenge. Yeah, but it also looks. I see your name here a lot, Braden, as yeah. far as um, looking after um, the recommendations and, and seeing the, the the plan through over the next couple of years. So, uh, yeah, no, there there is a lot of work on the village part, and there actually will be a financial implication as well. Uh, the the key one is number thirty nine in the list, which is to to finalize the treatment. Uh, of hazardous fuels on Crown Land. Mm -hmm. So there's 85 hectares remaining. Um, wow. Council in this year's financial plan put aside $5,000 mm -hmm. for the prescription. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we need to apply for the grant this October through EBCM to, to get the, 70, the other 75% to have that prescription covered. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry Officer from Prince George is actually coming down next week to, to assess the land 
on our behalf and help us out with that. Great. And uh, after the prescription is done, then if it's in the budget, we would need to then set aside money next year to do the treatment. And then 80% of that treatment can be covered by UBCM funding. Okay. But it looks at the moment like the province is ending their funding by April will be the last funding round and then the money runs out. So we need to either hit the January or the April UBCM funding round and then there'll be no more money left for treatments. Okay. At the moment until we see, see what happens further. You know, what I observed from that is that there's lots of work to do. There's some money budgeted for it. There's plans for the future and you're aware of what the, what the landscape is. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Well, I feel like, uh, uh, so excellent. So uh, there's a motion on the, on the floor to, to do this. Mm -hmm. And, and I really respect, thank you for, uh, mentioning that it is a money matter. That's, that's important to council always. I'm glad to know that it's budgeted. Mm -hmm. Uh, all in favor. Okay, item 6.5. This is the moving uh, night piece uh, that's coming in. And I'll have uh, Councillor Bullock see if she can do a quick sum up. Although the fallback, I think Braden. Uh, uh, yeah, deputy. it was submitted by Dorothy Flower, um, who represents Give Youth a Voice. And they're looking f to be able to use the John Osacek Diamond for a moving night um, event. Um, Live Alcohol and Drug Free Awareness Outdoor Movie. And on the venue, we have a barbecue concession, a movie concession. Uh, they're showing Discover Valmont Production, or VCTV and Tourism, Discover Valmont Production. Uh, a second showing, there's a movie for children. And then, oh, there's an RCMP presentation about the D.A.R.E. program. And the main attraction being Back to the Future, the 20th anniversary. And uh, they figure, uh, they anticipate around 150 to 200 people at the event. It sounds great. Mm -hmm. I really hope to be there. <coughs> and I would like to make a motion to be able, for them to be able to use the uh, ball diamond. Excellent. And there's also a piece in there, uh, sorry, just as part of discussion, mm -hmm. uh, friendly amendment. There's also a contingency plan in case of rain to use the community hall. Yeah. Can we throw that, that? Is that acceptable with the mover and seconder? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Great. Further discussion? Great. No. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, moving on the agenda to uh, the reading file. Um, Council, what would you like to pull up, if anything? Legions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, that's important. Uh -huh. The, the uh, Royal Canadian Legions 50th anniversary. Um, I'm not sure if all of us that are attending UBCM will be back yet on that date, but I know there are a couple councillors that will be here. Um, so it would be really excellent uh, yeah. to attend that 50th anniversary. Okay, it's possible I'll be back, but... Uh, it's a tough one, right? Yeah. Things close up on Friday. Yeah. Just a quick message yeah. from staff to council on this one. Yeah. Uh, the Legion has been kind enough to provide a, uh, a postmarked envelope for, for RSVPs, mm -hmm. and so if council wants to attend, they, if they just send myself or Anne an email, we can we can slide that in the envelope and then we can mail that off on council's behalf. The envelope's at the front desk with Carlene and Heather. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can I can make it mm -hmm. on a Saturday. That's awesome. Because I, it's a, a rush to get back on a Saturday from... Yeah, yeah and the, uh, the event actually, I'm just looking for the actual... It looks like it's going to be a It's an yeah. afternoon event. Yeah. It starts with the parade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. parade, cenotaph, music. Mm -hmm. The museum will be open, dinner. So, sounds like it's going to be a really great event and celebration. Okay, I'm going to give it some hard thought and see if I can uh, commit mm -hmm. to coming back, yeah. uh, at least for the dinner. I'll try. Um, Barda has Sir Alan Creek clean up that day. With oh, yeah. Only about 30 volunteers, so. Um, yeah, and I've deal. kind of committed to that. But Councillor looks like she mm -hmm. should be able to get in there, too, so. I'll be there. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, 
I'll just pull up uh, something from the Columbia Institute um, the, uh, Can towards a Canadian energy strategy. And of course, I think we all uh, recognize, recognize why local government should care, and I hope to connect with these people and help push the, the gospel of geothermal. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, let's... let's uh, so my commotion to be received. Receive, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Council Blanchek. Yeah. Council Latimer. Uh, all in favor of receipt? Excellent. Okay, uh, item 8.1, uh, Committee and Commission Manual. It starts on page 59. And this is a, uh, a big piece. Uh, something that was right in our strategic plan right from the beginning when we took office and something that uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Councillor Latimer to speak about it. So the reason that this uh, manual came to light was to have all of the um, committees and commissions of council to be on the same page and and to um, follow the community charter in, in, in their uh, their meetings and um, and their policies within their meetings so um, and it's going to provide a, a clear view of what is required of the people that are, are part of all of these committees and commissions of council so that there's no surprises you know show up for meetings um, uh, if you have to miss meetings you have to have a, a reasonable excuse uh, you have to attend 75% of the meetings because it seems like some of the committees People come and go as they please, and, and it's the same people that are part of it all. So if you really want to be a part of the committee, that these policies and procedures are in place so that we all know that what, what we're getting into. Um, and all of the, the minutes for these meetings will also be um, available to council and to the public. So again, to have the transparency of, of these committees and commissions. So I'm highly in support of this, mm -hmm. just because we're also a part of so many. And again, what it's going to do is going to um, allow us to look at all the different committees that, that are a part of council and figure out are they really necessary to have. Us. So that's and a big thing. Part of this is because the, this process is much more onerous than... We, we do committee light on someone's where we don't have an agenda, we don't advertise publicly. But ultimately under the community charter people are allowed to come in publicly to these committees. Right. So it's a, a big road to hoe. Uh, I just want to commend I think you know there might be it might have been uh, sort of an appetite for change uh, you know we see some that some you know across the board some committee all committees operate differently and some might not be functioning the best or whatever and the idea is we'll come in and you know throw the hammer down but you know what this is actually uh, this this hammer cuts both ways it hammers both ways because it's both on um, uh, setting uh, expectations for uh, people who serve on committees and expectations for the work that this uh, village will do to support those meetings. And it streamlines everything. Yeah. Throughout, throughout everything. Yeah. Well, everybody's so, on the same page. Exactly. So there's no surprises for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. She did a really good job. She did yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. I just yeah. want to say thank you to Katie for taking it on for mm -hmm. her first big task here. It's, it's a great document yeah. for consistent best practices, right? That's what mm -hmm. we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I also commend Ms. Fabris, our intern. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll make a motion that Council approves the uh, Committee and, co and Commission Manual. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Uh, any more further discussion? That all in favor? Okay. Um, the Economic Development, uh, uh, Economic Development Officer Report, page 73 and 74. And the recommendation here is we receive this for information purposes only. Um, motion? But I'd also like, like to comment that uh, item number three, the Swift Creek Restoration Plan. Yeah. This is fabulous. I am really excited about that and hope that they can um, make that happen and get the grant funding that they're going to be applying for. Yeah. I think it's really wonderful. Okay, for those who haven't... Um, picked off the agenda online at home. Um, uh, three items on the, on the thing. One is an update on the Bigfoot Trail. Uh, the other is uh, the Vilmot Glacier Destination Resort, sort of a presentation about what had happened there. And then the third one is a really big new item, which is actually getting uh, 
rubber on the road uh, with the Swift Creek restoration. And um, this has uh, been taken up by locals and the village is donating its, uh, not donating, but lending its support yes. you know, to help get this, make this happen. This, this project is specifically um, for the salmon, salmon spawning grounds um, because a lot of damage had been done in last year's runoff. And so uh, a number of people have taken that on and it's great to try and make sure that we keep our salmon habitat um, no pun intended, flowing. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Can we just mention too who it is actually? Because yeah, I think it's important yeah. to take the hats off for them. Uh, Adventure Management, the Valmont Secondary School, the Valmont Elementary School, and the Village. It's a great partnership. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And of course, yeah. where's the money coming from? It's CBT uh, Environmental Initiatives, mm -hmm. which is great because we've always, uh, historically, we've been a little bit under drawn for that thing. Uh, on the environmental side, exactly. so it's really nice to see some funds flowing this way for that. What a great project! Yeah. So, so I'll make a motion that we receive the uh, economic development report. Okay, all in favor? Great. Uh, we got the public works report. Um, it's good. It's a very comprehensive report. I really appreciate this. Lots of work being done. Yeah. So much motion to receive it. Okay, Councillor Fletcher. <laughs> she just gave them all. Uh -huh. Councillor Salt. Uh, and I just want to make a comment. Uh, I think this is a wonderful extra that they did on Fifth Avenue by um, placing the parking stops along Fifth Avenue to prevent people from backing into the planters. Uh, when I saw those, I thought, good thinking. <laughs> We've had enough planters damaged over a couple of years, so I thought that was a, a nice added little thing that they've installed. So If these don't work, we're going with IEDs. <laughs> okay. So great report from the Public Works Superintendent. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got it on the floor. Um, all in favor? Great. Okay, we've got the Building Inspector's Report. Motion and receipt. <laughs> Councilor Salt. <laughs> Councilor Latimer. Uh, any questions, comments? Not all in favor? Great. Okay, further, we have the July 2013 Accounts Payable Report. Councillor Salt, uh, Councillor Latimer. Um, comments, questions? No, all in favor? Moving along. Excellent. This agenda is 185 pages, but we're getting through it. We're getting through it. But we've got some big stuff coming up here, for sure. I wonder how staff feels when they put together this big agenda and we just blew through it. Feel good? Yeah. Doesn't matter actually how they feel, really. <laughs> yes, it does. It does matter. It does. Okay. Uh, uh, we have a second financial report, uh, July progress report, which just provides update on where we're at. And uh, it's, it's a good one. There's lots of work going on. I'll make a motion to accept the progress report by okay. the Director of Council, Finance. Councilor Councilor Bullock, I see her hand go up. All in favor of that. Excellent. Uh, let's go to 13.13, 13.3 uh, rather, uh, permissive tax exemption policy. I'm really pleased to see this one come up. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll do a little background on this. I have the chance to sit down with Lori and uh, our financial officer and uh, and speak about this. Uh, the idea is uh, with this is to update the uh, permissive tax exemption policy. And um, this new policy will allow for more organizations to apply for the exemption. Um, with a process that's fair and transparent. It really is, there's a, like, there's a nice process. It's benchmarked based on what other communities do. It's not, uh, um, oh. Huh. <laughs> fair enough. They're like, oh, council meeting. <laughs> Wrong turn. Um, so yeah, this is an important one. Uh, it it uh, gives a chance for organizations that own a, 
own land to apply for a tax exemption if they qualify. And it really is, as it always is, up to council to make a, to make a call on that. But um, I'm putting the word out there that organizations like the Valemount Curling Club can apply for a tax, tax exemption. I think I just said that a bunch of times without really talking about what it was. But anyways, at least everybody knows at least that this policy is coming up. So council, um, with that, uh, and I'll just get into the actual the recommendation because there's a technical piece here. So the policy, um, the policy stands is, uh, or th there's a policy written here. But this year uh, there would be an exception to the deadline to August 31st. That would give organizations a chance to go to seek tax exemption status if they so choose. Uh, the criteria, that's right. <laughs> and so there's not that much time, but I understand that those organizations will get a heads up if this policy is approved. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that motion forward. I'll second it. Councilor Bullock, discussion. The uh, the application form is pretty in depth, so mm -hmm. uh, there should be no issues mm -hmm. with information. Yeah. And maybe, thank you for mentioning that, I'll just give a sense is that, uh, you know, it's sort of best practice is that, I actually looked at it and I thought, I'm not a, I'm not a form kind of guy, and I thought it was pretty intense, but you know, it's like stuff like describe the purpose and use of the land and, or the buildings. In other communities, church properties were shown to be um, revenue generators for parking and other things, and so it's important. If, if it's your parking for your church, that's one thing, if it's like, parking for a hot dog stand or something else. You know, like, it, it matters, right? If you're making profit on it. So it has to truly be non-profit. And um, I don't think, uh, I, I think the form for most uh, organizations could be quite uh, easy. Yes. So, with that, all that good discussion. Uh, all in favor? Great. Okay, uh, section 697. Or, sorry, bylaw 697, section 14.1, the solid waste collection. Um, a staff recommendation is that we approve third reading of the bylaw, number 697, 2013, solid waste collection. And in our administrative report is a really good rundown of um, what happened at the public open house and kind of reflects where where things are at, and uh, just to give a... People were excited. Yeah. More so about recycling. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people asked a lot of questions. They yeah. checked out the um, the garbage bins, yeah. played with them, stuffed people in. Yeah. Yeah, they had fun, you know, and they wanted to know, you know, when are we getting recycling? When are we getting recycling? So... Uh, that was good. Well... Mm -hmm. So I make a motion that uh, Council approve third reading of bylaw number 697, uh, the solid waste collection bylaw. I'll second it. Okay. Further discussion? Not. All in favor? Um, now we're getting into some meaty stuff. Mm -hmm. Pages 118 to 183. <laughs> yes. Look at me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think I will look to Councillor Salt for <laughs> help on this one. Well, first I'll, I'll thank uh, Deputy Corporate Officer Hutchins for his very well-written um, cover on this because he does lay it out very well. Um, I, I mentioned previously about our bylaw adjudication um, notice enforcement and the in-depth work that that's going to take and require and I think tonight's agenda demonstrates our very good start to that. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly has made us really aware of of the three key areas uh, of a bylaw that um, <coughs> Mr. Hutchins pointed out and that's the regulation part of the bylaw, the fees and charges of a bylaw, and then the enforcement of a bylaw where we have the fines and penalties. And so the, through this process, of course, we also then realize that when we are appointing the penalties to the bylaw adjudication bylaw, um, a notice and enforcement, that we have to also consider the fees and charges 
for those particular bylaws and include them now into a standalone fees and charges bylaw, which will make um, things a lot more streamlined and easier for staff to be more effective and um, efficient instead of having to look through all the different bylaws to find those particular fees and charges. Mm -hmm. It's all in one place for them, so it'll be you know really helpful for them. And then, um, then you have your standalone bylaw that has the regulations. So hence why there are five bylaws coming to council tonight, mm -hmm. um, along with the adjudication bylaw. And that's, um, we've now pulled out the fees and charges for the ones that we've included in the adjudication one. Uh, we're doing first and second reading of the animal bylaw, sign bylaw, good neighbor bylaw, and burn bylaw. There haven't been any real significant changes to any of those bylaws because most of them were fairly recently done and some of them involved uh, committee involvement of citizens as well. Yeah. So we respect the work and time that they've put into those. Good. So again, it's only mainly been wording for the adjudication bylaws been included into those. Uh, wording indicating that the fees and charges and penalties are, you know, on the fee and charges bylaw or the adjudication bylaw, and and just those are the main changes. And the fabulous work, like this has been on the radar for two years, yeah. and, like, or where we've almost been in, uh, for two years, but we know we know it was on the radar before then, and and it's nice that it's getting done. Yeah. So. And I, I would just like to say one more thing, and that's a huge thank you to. Councillor Blanchett, yeah. Deputy Corporate Officer Hutchins, and all the other administrative staff that have been assisting us on this process because it has been a lot of work and I know staff have been working really hard. So um, thank strong. you. <laughs> Littlest words, eh? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let's let's get to the work of this. Um, I just have one comment. Yeah. I would like to pull out the sign bylaw. Sure. Um, we had a meeting this afternoon. I'm on the sign bylaw committee. And um, I think we just need a little bit more time in order to bring it to first and second reading. So I'd like to pull that one for for now, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fair. Sure. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I'm sorry. That's no, no, okay. no, 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 no. That's It'll save everybody else work in the long run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and that's why I say we respect the work that these committees mm -hmm. have done. And so, sorry, I was I no, forgot you were meeting. Yeah, yeah. so I apologize for the late meeting, but um, that's the first that we can all get yeah. together. So no. good. So. Okay. What's well, a perfect time to pull it out? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm just going to go through this list here to knock things off. We'll just do it one at a time and make sure everybody knows what we're getting into. Um, I'm going to move uh, third reading of bylaw notice uh, enforcement and dispute adjudication system bylaw number 698, 2013. Mm -hmm. Councillor Salt, how's my dad going on? Any discussion? All in favor? Great. Um, Councillor Salt, I'll let you do the next one here. I move first, second, and third reading of fees and charges bylaw number 699, 2013. Excellent. Councillor Bullock? And all in favor? Okay. First and second reading of the animal bylaw number 700, Councillor Blanchett. Mm -hmm. I'll have her make that motion. Councillor Salt, back her up. And uh, all in favor? Great. Um, we, we'll leave the sign bylaw where it is right now and uh, give some time there. And we'll go to first and second reading of the Good Neighbor Bylaw, number 702-2013. Got a mover for that one, Councillor Salt. Fair enough, Councillor Blanchett. And all in favor? That's great. Oh, and we've got one more. Uh, first and second reading of Burn Bylaw, number 703-2013. Okay, excellent, Councillor Blanchett. Councillor Salt, all in favor? Great. Yeah. That's how we do. What was that, like uh, 80 pages? Boom. Okay. Moving right to the back. Page 184. <coughs> um, we have a list of council, outstanding council resolutions. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, whoa, I'm, I missed one. Sorry, council reports. Who wants to go first? Oh, Councilor Bullock. Uh, all I have to report is a meeting with the community forest yesterday where we sadly said farewell to Shane Brissett and hello to Craig Pryor, oh. who will be our new community forest uh, manager. And I'm hoping to set up a time where we can all 
everyone else can meet him so we can become familiar with him because he does live outside the village so he might not be as a familiar faces. So that's all I have to report. Okay, Councillor Lowe. Okay. So, um, end of July, I attended a meeting with most of us here, um, with the CEO of the Canada Winter Games, which is being er, which is being held in Prince George. So that was a pretty exciting meeting, actually. Oh, yeah. The presentation was incredible, and um, I think Vailmount's going to try and jump on board somehow in order to be a part of this this big celebration. Um, we did some advisory planning commission interviews over a couple of days, had some great candidates. It was really exciting to see some of the people that had come in and the expertise that we were probably not really familiar with um, and with some of these people. Um, attended a recycling presentation by the regional district Fraser Fort George, which was uh, ho-hum, eh? <laughs> Um, but it was at least they had lined up better for us. Yeah, better but you know, it was it was a start with the recycling that where we're where we're hoping to go. Um, had a meeting with uh, Varda, and uh, the uh, Clamina cabin is uh, about to be built. And uh, well, we have to get some some tenders, I guess, first. Um, attended the ATV ride up Canoe Mountain for the summer festival. We had all uh, but five um, out of town participants. The rest, or like we had five locals, mm -hmm. and the rest were all from out of town. It was quite amazing. A lot had never been up Canoe Mountain before. How many do you figure? Um, we had about 18 or yeah, so. 18, yeah. Great. Um, yeah, and the weather was perfect. I mean, it was hot, and it was beautiful up there, and I don't know how anybody gets up to Canoe Mountain in a truck. <coughs> like, honest, honest to God, it was crazy. <laughs> um, today had a signed bylaw meeting, and then tonight now here at Council. So, kind of a busy two weeks. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thanks. Okay. Here's the slide. I'm yeah. it up. <laughs> uh, like Councillor Latimer, the uh, exciting 2015 Canada Winter Games in Prince George. And, uh, yeah, I'm. that was really exciting. And it's nice to see and hear how they hope to and wish to try and incorporate and, in, and involve um, other communities in BC to get on board with this. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, had a bylaw, actually I'll say two bylaw review committee meetings and as you see we've been working very hard so I don't think I have to go on any further about that. Um, two advisory planning commission um, meetings of doing interviews and I also was very surprised uh, at some of the talent and credentials hiding in the woodwork in our village. Uh, you know there are people out there but until you see some of them and hear their qualifications it's Always a pleasant surprise to see the talent we have. And also the Regional District uh, Fraser Fort George recycling presentation. And I'm glad to hear I wasn't the only one that thought ho hum. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, it was I w a little saddened that it didn't turn out to be quite as exciting or as positive, but I guess we'll figure something out and work through. Okay, so uh, the 2015 Canada Games, of course, I attended that meeting. Then on Saturday, I had a phone interview. Uh, I did, okay, wait a minute. Saturday, I had um, the first presentation um, out by our sign for the, uh, Valmont Walks Around the World yeah. for our first millionth step. We had um, the, I'm sorry that my brain is not working tonight. Um, we had the uh, walking stick was carved by uh, locals Henry Unger and Alison Kubas, and they did a fantastic job. The new newspapers came, took great pictures, did a great story. Then on Sunday morning, I had a phone interview with Jean McGregor from BC Healthy Communities. And what's happened is BC Healthy Community Society has, is partnering with the BC Minister of Health on an, on an initiative which provides capacity building support for local governments towards healthier committees. And they're launching a website and they're using Valmont as the uh, key. Yeah. So it's really exciting. Uh, we'll be presenting when I go up in uh, November and we'll be doing some more of that research for governments and working in small towns. So that's really, really exciting. Then, of course, we had the two uh, days of interviews for the advisory planning meetings. We had the regional district meeting. I had a VCTV meeting, so we're um, going along with uh, with our uh, television. 
Uh, I had a bylaw adjudication meetings, and then Friday night we had a welcome for the geocaching event. It was very, very successful, learned a whole bunch. All my caches went through, per perfect, except we had one gentleman from out of town who went to one of my caches and got uh, stung by wasps, dropped his geocache down a hole, ran for his life, had 23 bites, and then went back later for his geocache. So yeah, that went well. <laughs> Um, but I have a few thank yous. Um, so first of all, Tourism Belmont for giving us the funding to do this event. And it was the first time geocaching event and we're already planning next year's. People are coming back. We had people from England come. She was so excited about this. She was just thrilled. They exchanged her and um, Paul Johnson exchanged geocache things. Um, so that, and apparently that was exciting. Um, we had people from Ontario, uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Alberta, and as well as BC, so it was really well received. Uh, Luke and uh, Linda Hedberg really brought the idea forward to have a geocaching event, so I'd like to thank them. Paul Johnson, who taught us all about geocaching, because I absolutely knew nothing. He also ran a course and taught some of the locals how to do it and what to do, and then they came and helped us with our geocaches. Um, and he worked really tirelessly with Jen. Silvio Gislombardi helped with all the technical stuff. He had to all of a sudden at the last minute learn a program to download all of our files so that they could be loaded. And finally, um, we have a real tourism gem in Jennifer Robinson. She ran this whole thing, put it together all by herself. Uh, she did a terrific job. It was professional, was well put together, well thought through, just Big, huge kudos to her, because she did a really good job. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to next year. So that was my two weeks. Wow. I just have a comment about the geocaching. A couple of the quarters from Alberta, mm -hmm. and uh, myself and Rhonda were like the, the behind people to make sure everybody got through the trail, and, and these people had stopped. And they were in the bush, and they were running around, and we're like, oh my god, there's something wrong. And so we stopped, and we're like, yeah, everything okay. Yeah, yeah, we're just cashers. She says, and there's, we got a GPS that it's right here, and it's right on the t almost at the top of Canoe Mountain. Mm -hmm. We're like, what? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so it's kind of exciting. We too, had that so. put up there. Yeah. 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 Treasure yeah. yeah. Yes. And it's yeah. this is big, like big. You wouldn't believe the lady that came from England had an ensemble, and she opened <laughs> up her bag, and these things came out, and this is a trackable, and this is a bug, and this is a you know I don't know what all the stuff was, and I mean it was just like. The talk all for two days was just geocache, geocache. You know, it was uh, it was really a lot of fun. So yeah. So thank you to everybody. Good. Wow. Good. Um, I'll I'll try to quickly get through my report. Um, I had a another uh, wonderful CBT meeting. Our summer one is a video conference, so I really appreciate that. Um, and some committee work with. Uh, um, I, I got to have a meeting with uh, Ron Marshall and Greg Bruce uh, with MOT. And he scheduled an interview and came down. We, we, had, we met with uh, the administrator, um, Public Works, and, and myself. And we discussed, it, we sort of missed an opportunity to discuss that item about um, uh, what our priorities are for the Ministry, Ministry of Transportation. So it was a, that was a real oversight. But the, uh, but the good thing was it was an opportunity to get us on track with uh, MOT's paving program, just to keep up that communication. It's not like Trevor's not in communication, but it's just, uh, you know, how do we coordinate this thing? How do we make sure that we reduce our costs in paving by tacking on to their uh, thing and, and the finessing around that because it's you can do certain stuff you can't do everything so really great I really want to thank uh, Ron Marshall and Greg Bruce for coming all the way out because one way to test the road is to drive it so it's really great of course Greg's on the road a lot but and uh, unfortunately Greg Bruce will be moving to Prince George for a while and that's a real professional choice and family choice and everything like that and uh, I just want to say um, uh, my feeling, my sense of it is that he's number two in PG uh, after Ron Marshall, and that is a really good thing. And so we shouldn't think about it as a loss. We should think about it as um, we've got somebody who's uh, moving up in the Ministry of Transportation who really knows what our issues are here. So that's that's good. You know, it's good. And of course, a big contributor to the community. But let's not think about it in those terms. Um, uh, I got to do a reading at the library. Well, not a reading. Uh, I got to tell an adventure story at the library. And I got a superhero name, which I will... Um, I s not share. <laughs> Shouldn't share? Yeah. No. You did the bad one? I got... Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Don't do it. Okay, thank you. I, I take I take advice once in a while. Um, it was really fun to go to the library, and I told about an adventure story uh, in, of my youth. Uh, we had the Rawson Valley uh, Region uh, Marketing Plan, and they're putting together a uh, uh, a website for to hold that whole thing together. Really, what that is is that essence of um, this economic strategy that's going on uh, at the regional level, where we really call out very specifically, or or have the answer for people who are. Uh, looking to learn about, not tourism, but op tourism opportunities, like business opportunities, uh, agricultural opportunities, and sort of professional opportunities that are afforded in the Robson Valley. So it's the place where you go and you find out that, yeah, Vermont has a high school and it rocks, you know, where you find out what the amenities are, for example, yeah. And it was a really good meeting, nice to see it coming together. I know we always are a little bit suspicious when somebody throws up another website or whatever, but this one is really, somebody is finally answering this thing of not just, let's not just advertise tourism, let's advertise what the Robson Valley is about for prospective people who want to move here, just based on the merits. Not that we have to build something in order to make them come, but let's very clearly say what it is that's here. Yeah. Whatever diversification we have. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, um, really good meeting, it's nice to see that taking shape. Um, uh, the recycle curbside recycle meeting. I actually, you know, it 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 is kind of a sad state of affairs. Uh, basically, um, the powers that be, the private powers that be. And I'll learn more about this uh, in two days' time in Prince George. Well, I'm getting a presentation from the executive director of the uh, uh, Multi Material Recycling BC. Um, but the idea is they presented a package to. Um, cooperate with Velmount to do curbside recycling. But it's really a replacement package for communities that already have a program underway and are, are in like 10 year commitments. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of not losing their shirts. But there is no enticement. And the real thing that we got to keep our eyes on the price is we want curbside recycling. I think, I think we want it as much as anybody does. But the trick is um, people who make garbage before it gets to us and package things in it, they have to pay for it. And we cannot legally charge people on the street to collect that. You know what I'm saying? We don't want people paying twice. You pay it when you buy the thing. The cost of recycling that package is in the package. You pay the extra price. That's how it's going to be now. So to go and do the double, you know, to double buy and then charge people here by increasing taxes to provide a curbside recycling service doesn't work. But what it's done is it's really got us thinking about if we had to use our truck, our personnel, and operate it like a garbage service, what would it cost us? And when they put that out for tender, I, I think there's a good chance that Valmont will be able to make a very educated guess and say, this is what we need to run the service. If you want us to do it, we'll do it. And if private industry wants to go and say, well, we'll do it, you know, by all means, we just want the curbside recycling happening, but it, it, it's helped us think about it. Um, economic development uh, front, a, another big thing that's going on here um, is we had, there's a new, uh, I'm going to say new Miles Bruns, a new economic development coordinator based out of Prince George, and that is totally not her title, but um, uh, a McBride to Barrier project. Rhonda Cage is her name. She came to Velma, made a special trip, and actually uh, met here. And Miles Bruns came up from Kamloops uh, to get affiliated with the Velma file and to figure out what it is that we need to push things forward. So she knows about Velma Glacier Destination. She knows from Miles, who's been on this file. So it's a really nice handoff, uh, not just Velma Glacier Destination. She knows about our aspirations for our community forest. She knows about our, our desire for geothermal and all of these things, all our strategic priorities that we've been pushing as a community, they're up to snuff and it's really nice that she made the visit out here. So, um, there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm also preparing for the marathon and I'm not going to speak about my yard right now. Okay, so that's the, that concludes my report. So, motion to accept all those reports. Okay, Councillor. All in favor? Okay, 
Uh, we've got a list of council, outstanding council resolutions. This is just for our reference, page 184. Councilor Salt? Mm -hmm. Right on. Councilor Bullock? The follow up and all in favor of. Okay. Is there any discussion on those? Let's move on then. We have a calendar. Uh, we'll receive that for information. Do we need to make a motion on that? Receive. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask, can we have UBCM added on for September? Yeah. So that's September 16 to 20. Okay, let's do that. Uh, Councillor Saul, Councillor Montet. And all in favor? Let's get that thrown on there. Now, we're at the type of part of the evening when we go to uh, public comment. And um, I'll just sort of go over uh, how this works. We really appreciate it when you uh, identify your name and your address. Um, that just helps us process. We like to limit comments and questions to two minutes per person. And uh, it should be an item on the current agenda. Yeah. So, are there public comments? Oh. Yes, Donelda. <laughs> I have no comments. <laughs> okay. It's nice to see you all. <laughs> oh, I like that. That'll work. Okay. All right. Nobody's jumping out of their seat. So we'll just, we'll, okay. Oh. Uh, former counselor, Joan Norley. Yes, Joan Norley of 50 Bell Street, Swift Creek Road. And I just want to say that since you built that little path down by the little, that's highway path, yeah. but do you ever think of going over the hill and take, picking up the garbage? Because oh, which side? All, it is yeah. a public walk. Sure. And the, the ones that are picking up are the families. Okay. Yeah, so I'd just like to you know to note that that is... That's becoming an issue on... You the, know, on down the road, the, the, the east side of the highway where the new path is. Highway is the, that's the highway road to protect the bridge. That's why it goes along there. And people just, uh, dirty diapers. Ooh. I mean, yes, ooh, is right. And I mean, I see cars parked there, and, and I, I'm not going to be nosy enough to go and find out what they're doing, but. You know, I've asked before to have a, an occasional garbage can along there because when the, the salmon are running, there are people also walking along there. Absolutely. And they just throw it on either side. It doesn't matter to them. Thank you for bringing this forward. And uh, thank you for that path that's under the bridge. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're happy to attribute that to uh, LDM and, and Ministry of Highways for sort of following suit. Yes. And well, you know, we've owned that property since 67. But the highways took that piece to, along the, the river yeah. up to our corner. Yeah. But they've never once put a blade down and done any work on the road. <laughs> no. There you go. It's just for, we Nordics have the machinery to do it. <laughs> but it, it's the same thing with snow removal. They, they never do that. We do. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Joe. Great. Okay. Great. Motion to receive public comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and all in favor? See how I played that? <laughs> okay. The next item is uh, notice to proceed in camera. Councillor Salt, Councillor Blanchett, all in favor? Thank you so much for coming out. Um,